Lesson 4.3, multiply with 3 and 6, we're going to use a multiplication table. We can multiply with 3 as a factor by skip counting by 3's. We can multiply with 6 as a factor by using 5 facts and addition. Skip counting by 6's or by using doubles. We can find products by using a multiplication table. That's what this is right here. This is a multiplication table to see where the row and column meet. For 6 times 4, that equals 24. We look at the row for 6, we look at the column for 4, and we see where they meet. They meet at 24. The row for 6 and the column for 4 meet at the 24, so 6 times 4 is equal to 24. Tala made triangles with toothpicks. She used three toothpicks for each triangle. She made four triangles. How many toothpicks did she use? You can get toothpicks and try this. She put one, two, three toothpicks and made a triangle. And triangles have three sides. She made four triangles. We can skip count by the number of sides. They have three sides. We can say 3, 6, 9, 12. We have four groups of three, so Tala used 12 toothpicks. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. And if four groups of three is equal to 4 times 3, which is equal to 12, then eight groups of three is equal to 8 times 3 which is equal to this 12 plus another 12. We did 4 times 3 two times by making it an 8, because 4 plus 4 is 8. And that would equal 24. We doubled the product of the 4 times 3 to help us find 8 times 3. Emma made 6 octagons with popsicle sticks. How many popsicle sticks did she use? So an octagon has eight sides, and if she made six of these, we can solve this by using facts for five and addition. Facts for five can be easier because it's easier to skip count by fives. We had six groups of eight, so we use five groups of eight. Five times eight is equal to 40. We can skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now we just add one more group of 8. That would be like a 1 times 8, which is 8. We have 40 plus 8, which is 48. So 6 groups of 8 is equal to 6 times 8, which is equal to 48. So we used 5 groups of 8 and then added another group of 8. We had 5 groups of 8. We found that it was 40, then we added another group of 8 to have 6 groups of 8, and that was 48. So 5 times 8 plus 8 is equal to 48 popsicle sticks. So to multiply a factor by 6, we multiply that factor by 5, and then add that factor. So if we want to do 6 times 6, we could do 5 times 6. We can skip count that very quickly. We skip count six numbers five times, or five numbers six times. Either way, we get five times six, which is equal to 30, plus six more. Then we'll have six groups of six. We start with five groups of six, which is 30. We add another group of six, and 30 plus 6 is equal to 36. Let's try it again, because this could be confusing. To do 6 times 7, we could do 5 times 7, then add another group of 7 to have 6 groups. That would be 35 plus that other group of 7, which would be 42. We can do 6 times 8 by doing 5 times 8, then adding another 8. That would be 40 plus 8, which is equal to 48. We can do 6 times 9 by doing 5 times 9 and then adding another group of 9. We would have 45 plus 9, which is equal to 54. 
So if you find the five times table easier to f get a product, then use the fives times table and then add another group of that amount, of that number. When at least one factor is an even number, we can use doubles. It has to be an even number so that we can split it. So if we have six times eight, we can split this even number six into a three and a three, couldn't we? Half of six is three. So we can do three times eight, which is 24, and then add another 24 to it. We double the product of the three times eight. 24 plus 24 is equal to 48, so six times eight is equal to 48. Just make sure that at least one factor is an even number. You want to practice finding products horizontally as a multiplication sentence and vertically when they're stacked. 5 times 3 is 15. We can do it horizontally or we can do it vertically. 10 times 6 is equal to 60. We can do it horizontally or vertically. Make sure you've got your 1's lined up and your 10's lined up, okay? One of the biggest mistakes people make in doing math work is they don't have their place values and their columns straight. And they make mistakes because they confuse where the numbers are. So be careful. We can use a multiplication table to find 6 times 8 is equal to 48. We look at the row for 6 and... The column for 8, we see that they meet at 48, so 6 times 8 is equal to 48. Let's take a closer look. Here's the row for 6, here's the column for 8, and they meet at the 48. So you could find any multiplication product by using the table. Just find where the number meets that column, and that's the product. And because 3 is half of 6, the products for 3 as a factor are half the products for 6 as a factor. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 6 times 2 is equal to 12. 3 is half of 6. 6 is half of 12. See? Let's take a closer look. Here are the products for 3s. We have a 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. See it coming across the row here. Here's the products for 6. 3 is half of 6. 6 is half of 12. 9 is half of 18. 12 is half of 24. See how all the products of 3 are half the products of 6? We can do that with a 5 and a 10. The products of 5 are half the products of 10. We can do it for 2 and 4. The products for 2 are half the products for 4. See, because 2 is half of 4. By understanding this, you'll be able to find the products for larger numbers by using the smaller facts. And you need to memorize these multiplication facts before you start fourth grade. Students who memorize the multiplication facts before fourth grade find math easier for the rest of the time they're in school. We can use reasoning to complete each table. For this first table, it says we need to multiply by 3, and there's a factor of 4. So it's saying 3 times 4, and we need the product. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. We can put a 12 in the table. Using what we've learned so far, if this product is a 12 and this one is a 24, 12 plus 12 is 24. What do you think this missing factor could be? This, 24, is double that one. So this factor must be double that one. This must be an 8. For this one, it says multiply by 6, and we have a factor of 3. We need 6 times 3. We need to put the product here. 6 times 3 is equal to 18. 
Now for this one, it's saying 6 times some factor is equal to 30. Our product is 30. We need to figure out what the missing factor is. 6 times, do you know? 6 times 5 is equal to 30. So 5 was the missing factor. Now take a look at this last one. This one's trickier. It's not telling us what to multiply by, but it's saying that the factor is 6 and the product is 30. We can use the table from here. It said 6 times 5 was equal to 30. We've got our 6 and we've got the 30. The missing factor is 5. That must be a 5 up there. Once we use this to find what we're supposed to multiply by, we can now solve this one. It wanted some factor times 5 was equal to some number, to some product. Now that we know that's a 5, we know this is 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is equal to 25. So for this table, because this factor was missing, we had to solve this first to figure out 6 times some number is equal to 30 so before we could figure out this one. Sometimes when you're trying to solve a problem on a test or your homework, you can look at your previous work to give you a clue. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.